UCLA is a university with unlimited possibilities for students that desire world-class academics and research, unmatched diversity, incredible cultural and social opportunities, successful alumni and career networking, first-class campus facilities, plus America's top intercollegiate sports teams. Located in Westwood, just a few miles from the Pacific Ocean, UCLA's one square mile campus is surrounded by famous cities such as Bel Air, Beverly Hills, Brentwood, and Santa Monica. Hi everybody and welcome to Westwood for another edition of UCLA Bruin Talk. I'm Dave Marcus, joined as always by Allison Taylor. Today, a coach's corner. In just a moment, we'll meet the newest member of the UCLA coaching family, and then we'll visit with a coach who brought home UCLA's latest national championship. Before we meet our first guest, let's take a look at the upcoming events. In 500 BC, the Greek philosopher Heraclitus said the only thing constant is change. Coming off a successful 28-5 season, UCLA women's basketball welcomes a new head coach to campus. She's been here before as an assistant 17 years ago. Mm -hmm. Welcome back to Westwood, Corey Close. It is so great to be home, and I'm so thankful for this great opportunity to be back in the Bruin family. You've had an, an interesting career since you left here, working with Mark French at Santa Barbara, building out to a great program then nine very successful years as the associate head coach with Sue Semerow at Florida State. How have those experiences influenced your career? Well, it's, it, we don't have enough time for how much those people and those places have influenced my career. But, you know, they're so different. You know, at, at UC Santa Barbara, we had to learn to take players that maybe were under the radar and outdevelop uh, maybe bigger name schools and, and really try to uh, coach from a creative standpoint that way. And, and then it's moving across the country and a completely different kind of young lady that I got a chance to be a part of and learning in the South and, and the ACC and uh, all of those things, all of those added to being able to create a complete package of having a vision of what does it mean to create a top 10 program uh, that teaches and equips and mentors young people for their life after UCLA. But that vision would not be nearly as clear without those previous experiences since I left UCLA the first time. Well, you were the associate head coach of Florida, and now you're the head coach at UCLA. What is the difference in attitude as you take this position? Well, you know, I think the difference is maybe some of the time demands, you know, look a little bit different in their proportions. Um, I was really uniquely prepared by two very secure, great leaders that allowed me to make uh, decisions in game time, uh, you know, plays and drawing it up at the last second, doing practice planning. So in terms of that, I, I don't think it's as different as most people's transitions would be. Um, at the same time, there's obviously a new, uh, new level of freedom. Uh, it's a chance for me to put in uh, what I've dreamed about for a long time in terms of my vision, my plan, my habits that I think are important at a championship level. Uh, so, you know, obviously there are some adjust adjustments to be made, but uh, it's been pretty smooth so far. Back when you were here in the 90s, mm -hmm. you developed a very serious relationship with Coach John Wooden. Mm -hmm. What of his philosophies do you incorporate into your own coaching style? Well, it's interesting. I feel like I have a tape recorder of Coach Wooden <laughs> in my head that plays every day and never has it played more often than since I've been back here. Um, you know, and I always want to stop and say thank you to his family that shared him with us so generously. 
Uh, he just, uh, there's so many things. You know, just yesterday I was talking about, uh, to our team, about when preparation, you know, meets opportunity and being ready for those things and, you know, just the habits of excellence that you want to develop in every area of your life and, you know, treating them as people first, students second, athletes third, all of those, uh, you know, journey beyond the destination is, is more important to him than anything else. Uh, I, I tweeted last night uh, <laughs> that, you know, he taught me about um, being a teacher is more than being the coach, you know, and I really see myself that way. And, and I was talking about how much I thought about that all day yesterday, that that is my role as a teacher. So, um, you know, every single, almost every single moment of being the head coach at UCLA, I, I listen to him and I hear him and I'm impacted by the wisdom he shared. Coach, we got to give you props. You're a great tweeter. <laughs> People out there should follow you on Twitter because you're doing a great job of communicating your experiences with the team. Well, thank you. And, you know, uh, all of our tweets um, our, of all of our coaches are available on UCLABruins.com. And we're, um, we're really glad to share our journey of this program, share our relationships with our players, share the championship quest that we're on through that small venue. So I welcome people to be a part of that with us through Twitter. A lot of your tweets had a foreign accent. You had a great opportunity with mm -hmm. the Bruins to go on a pre-planned trip to Italy. What an experience to bond with your new team. Well, it's it's so many things. Uh, it's uh, education in 3D. I mean, it's the it's the things that players have been reading about in books and seeing, and now they're going, oh, I remember that, I heard about that, and we had this amazing guide, um, and there's some great pictures on the website, but Mia, and she made it come alive for our team. We were in the Vatican, and they were just clued in like this to every word she said, and there was such rich history, and so the educational angle was amazing. The basketball angle of being have, have those 10 days, especially as a quarter school that starts later, were imperative for us to uh, learn a rhythm as a staff to learn what, uh, oper how our, strength, our strengths can be operated at the highest level. Um, but more importantly was the relationships. It's being able to get away, our phones didn't work, uh, you know, all those things, and being able to just have the relationship time. It's, you know, walking through Verona and, and being in the back of our team with, you know, Thea and being able to learn about more about her family and being on bus rides, you know, through the amazing um, Tuscany scenery and all of that and being able to share that. And uh, it's, it's sitting in the front of the bus and listening to the cackles and the laughter from the back of the bus uh, that were, are just priceless. So I'm so thankful that our administration had the foresight to keep that in place and I uh, really got a year's worth of trust and relationship building in about 10 days. There are two seniors on the team this upcoming year, Rebecca Gardner and Jasmine mm -hmm. Dixon. What kind of leadership role do you expect your older, more experienced players to take on the team? Well, it will be to the extent that they can lead us um, is how far we will go. Um, you know, Jazz is, is just such a, she, her versatility continues to surprise me um, and her competitive nature. I love that, you know, even in Italy when there was hardly anyone around, the gyms were hot, no air conditioning, she just wants to win. And it was really fun to watch that competitive spirit come out in her. And her, um, I think we're going to be able to really showcase some of the different skills that she hasn't been able to uh, bring to the forefront as of yet. And that's to her credit. She's willing to work on those things to be prepared for that. Um, but she has to be our, she's our most experienced person in pressurized situations. And she's going to have to have a steadiness about her. I really challenged her to, to be a 15 and 10, 15 points, 10 rebound type of person. And she's really, I think, willing to rise up to that occasion. Uh, Rebecca Gardner has to lead in a different way. She has to learn to find her voice at a higher level, and I thought yesterday she stepped up in a major way in a team meeting. I think she's ready to stand as a leader in a way that she hasn't been up to this point. Um, her ability to shoot the basketball, that's been somewhere we've struggled. She's going to have to consistently be able to stretch defenses. Um, she's going to be able to be aggressive to create her own shot as we've lost some of that from the backcourt. But more importantly than all of that is her ability to lead, be steady, make great choices when the coaches aren't there, control the locker room, how our mindset is and, and that's got to come from both of those players. Your reputation coming in is as an offensive genius. At Florida State you engineered an offense that scored a lot of points. UCLA's strength was its defense last mm -hmm. year. Mm -hmm. How do you get the offense flowing to make up for some of the deficit with the two point guards from last year having graduated? 
Well, it's so funny that I've been known for that. Really, I, I developed offense because that's what my team of staff members needed from me. But I'm mostly committed to defense and rebounding first. So even though I'm glad to bring that to the table, um, it will have to start on us maintaining that defensive intensity and that rebounding dominance, even to a high level. We were a plus six on the boards last year. We're going to have to be more in the plus 10 or 11 range, I think, to create more shots in our opponents so that we're able to be effective on the offensive end. So as as I talk about offense, it's not to overlook that defense and rebounding are still the foundations of our success and our growing as a championship program. Um, but offensively, I, I think what I'm going to have to do this year is really um, we're going to try to get quick buckets on the strong side of the floor, trying to get layups, but then we're going to have to isolate different mismatches on the weak side of the floor after we create reversals. And uh, we're going to have to be very creative. Um, you know, we might have our best option be posting up our two-player, um, where we might have, you know, pulling out a five-player to shoot a jumper so that we can get a better mismatch. We're going to have to find our best mismatches, and it's probably going to be very non-traditional. Uh, we want to get up and run up and down as our defense creates those opportunities. At the same time, we want to have the confidence that we know how to find the right people, the right shots in the half court as well. I think you notice in the NCAA tournament, everybody's scores go down. And so you have to be able to grind out half court execution, even if you want to be an up and down running team uh, to be successful in the NCAA tournament. One thing I noticed in the brief practice I got mm -hmm. to see before you went to Italy You've talked a lot about precision on offense. Mm -hmm. You want things to be done precisely. And I saw you working with a lot of the players on the precision of their passes mm -hmm. in a way they've never had to do it before. Mm -hmm. Tell us the process of getting to a point where the mindset creates precision. Well, I think you said it perfectly. It's a mindset. It's that you have to understand in everything we do, um, and it's not even just on the court, that precision, that attention to detail, that little inches, little things make a big difference. Our theme this year is uncommon, and it, it's really based off of Tony Dungy's book um, where we're looking for uncommon women that are willing to make uncommon choices to yield an uncommon result. And uh, that's we have to make uncommon choices in the passes that we make. It's a matter of an inch between passing to the outside hand that could lead to a assist or a turnover that costs us at the other end. In defense, that inch could be sitting in your stance an inch lower so you're quicker an inch sooner. Um, all of those precision things are very big to me and they have to become habits. And, you know, it's a well-known saying that it takes 21 days to break an old habit and to form a new one. And we need to string together quality precision practices that have a high attention to detail so that by the time game time comes along, those inches have made um, big strides. We have a box in our office. Um, um, that they get a chance to put cards in of th recognizing in each other uncommon choices that they've been seeing. And it could be the way they studied for a test. It could be the way they treated someone and was really there for them as a teammate. But also it's on the court. It's her attention to never being boxed out and taking that extra inch to swim around a defender or to box out that defender that created another possession for our team. Those uncommon choices, we want to celebrate those and find those in each other. And as a visual aid, those cards are getting higher and higher and higher. So that those small and common choices make a bigger result and that are uh, really setting us up for an uncommon year that people wouldn't predict. And so I'm excited to watch that precision pay off as they choose those uncommon choices. Coach, not only are you new at UCLA, but you've brought in a very interesting staff, very mm -hmm. experienced yes. staff. And I know that part of your relationships from Santa Barbara mm -hmm. had a big part to do in building your staff. Tell us about your assistants. Well, our assistants are spectacular. Uh, you know, I went after the lottery picks in the nation, <laughs> and I got them. And I'm so excited about that. Um, I believe there, there, there's really two things that had to be in every staff member. One is they had to be great relationship-wise. And they had to know how to build trust with the players. They knew had to know how to invest in their lives off the court. And that carries over what makes them a good recruiter. I only know how to recruit one way, and that's building sincere, honest relationships so that we're trusted when they come in. So they had to be great relationship people number one. And number two, I wanted a staff that could all teach and break down the game because I know that we're going to have to bring some players in and help them be great, pass people up. If you want to win the first national championship in women's basketball at a storied program like UCLA, you have to be able to teach the game. So uh, Shannon Perry, you know, uh, she was at that other school across town when <laughs> I was uh, when I was at um, Santa Barbara and then she was at Duke when I was at Florida State and uh, known as one of the best recruiters um, in the country, but she is a 
great teacher of detail, but even more than that, she's a mentor, and her passion is mentoring our young women uh, through their college experience. Uh, Tony Noonan, I coached with for six years at uh, UC Santa Barbara, and if you ask all of our um, post players at Santa Barbara that went on to play in the WNBA and overseas, they will say his unique ability to teach and develop are the reason that they are there. And so he has got to be a huge development um, part. He's brilliant in-game. He's got one of those gifted minds that really feels it and makes great game adjustments, and I will take advantage of that in the way that we make adjustments in games. And then lastly is uh, Jenny Huth, and she worked with me at Florida State. She's a dominant player. She led a team from, you know, middle of the pack in the Big 12 to an Elite Eight team. She's played professionally. Um, she, she has the whole package, and she's spirited and fiery. And so I just think we're a very complimentary staff, but the best thing about it is that we're selfless. No one cares who gets the credit. We just want our young people to grow, to be more equipped, and to go win championships. The Bruins are going to be playing in the very exciting atmosphere of the John Wooden Center. They're staying on campus. It's going to be loud. It's going to be fun, and tickets are going to go fast, so make sure you get your place in line. Coach, thanks for joining us. Best wishes for a great season. Thank you so much. And we'll come right back for more Bruin Talk after this brief public service announcement. A trophy can be made just about anywhere. But there's one place where champions are made. UCLA, champions meet here. It's now time to honor our UCLA Student Athlete of the Week. This week, we honor Sydney LaRue of the UCLA women's soccer team as our Student Athlete of the Week. Sydney has led UCLA to three big wins this season, scoring in all three of the first games. The senior was also recently honored as tournament MVP at the 2011 Lady Vol Classic and Pac-12 Player of the Week. Recognized as one of the most dangerous forwards in the world, Sydney led the Bruins in scoring in both 2010 and 2009, with over 20 goals each season. Last season, Sydney joined the ranks of other legendary Bruins, moving into the top five all-time at UCLA in career points, goals, and game-winning goals. Sydney was also the highest scorer at the U-20 level in her play with the U.S. national team. Originally from Vancouver, British Columbia, Sydney played on the Canadian U-19 World Cup team in 2004 at just 14 years old. Good luck to Sydney LaRue and the women's soccer team in the rest of the 2011 season. If you would like additional information about UCLA Athletics, visit our website at www.uclabruins.com. And when you visit the UCLA website, you'll see that UCLA has won a nation-leading 107 NCAA team championships, the most recent one brought home by women's golf last spring. We're happy to have head coach Kerry Forsyth with us. Unbelievable. Great season for the Bruins. Your second national championship as a coach. Mm -hmm. Different feeling this time? Yes. It, I mean, it was a little bit different. The first one is, is pretty overwhelming. I mean, it's just such a huge goal. You never know if you're going to ever achieve it. Um, but the second one is parts of it were a little bit sweeter even because we had such a I mean wonderful group of girls and they got along so well and the whole season was just so much fun and we had had a lot of wonderful accomplishments during the season we won you know six or five times excuse me prior to that event but you know we a little bit up and down we didn't play well at pack tens and and uh, so we didn't really come in with the you know huge huge you know expectations we just thought. If we could just put together a great week, we had as good a chance of winning as anybody else, and uh, that's what we were able to do. Now you're on the doorstep of the new season, and you've got most of your team coming back. Yes. That's got to be a great <laughs> feeling. It is. It's really fun. It's, we have you know, great seniors, um, just so much experience in our roster this year, and two new freshmen coming in who are going to really help us out. And If anything, we have more depth this year than we had last year, uh, so I think that's, that's saying a lot. Coming off of a championship performance, can you tell us a little bit about what the importance of summer golf matches are for, for your players? Oh, for them, it's just, I mean, it's a great thing for them. As amateurs, a lot of the rankings and the ability to get into later on professional events or earn some sponsors exemptions and things like that into pro tournaments come through, you know, how you do in your amateur events, part of that being in college and then the other part of that being in the summer. And um, our girls just had an amazing summer. We had our senior, Brianna Doe, won the Women's uh, Public Leagues Championship. 
which is a USJ event. It's, it's a huge, huge honor. Um, and we had girls finishing, you know, quarterfinalists, semifinalists in the women's, U.S. Women's Amateur Championship. Um, just all in all, our pros recently are playing phenomenal. We've got uh, one of our former players who just made, was selected for the, uh, Ryan O'Toole, who was selected uh, for the Solheim Cup team and the LPGA. So it's just a great time to be a broom golfer, I should say, uh, this past summer and, and hopefully all the rest of our season. Your team was recently ranked number one by golf magazine Golf World. Do you think that puts any extra pressure on you as a coach and the, the players this upcoming year? I think it depends on how we handle it. You know, I've had teams in the past who were ranked number one, and it's really easy to get into expectations. You know, you're, well, when you're number one, you're expected to win every time, and it's not realistic in our sport. And so we're trying very hard to um, sort of just recognize it for what it is. It's just somebody's opinion at this point. We haven't earned anything yet or done anything yet this season. And, and uh, we won't know how good we are until we get out and start playing. And it won't even be in the first tournament. It usually takes about uh, half the season or three quarters of a, of a season, a whole year, before you know, we really, the rankings are actually meaningful. So um, right now it's early, but it's nice to be considered and thought of uh, so highly. I'm sure we're going to be uh, a great team. Whether we're one, two, or three, I guess it remains to be seen, but we're going to be awesome. Allison mentioned the summer, and I got to give great credit to your players. They all were rocking the Bruin gear in every tournament. Uh, <laughs> Brianna Doe and the Public Links, and, and the, the, the players, Stephanie Kono, Tiffany Lua, they all had the Bruins to find. Even Tiffany Joe, who's graduated and moved on into mm -hmm. the pro ranks in the Canadian Open, she had the Bruin hat on yeah, the whole time. That's a good girl, yeah. They're spreading the word. <laughs> now, we, we, we just have such a close family. I mean, it's a family, and and even when they move on, they still, they're, they're so um, proud to be Bruins. And I just love it. I mean, it just makes me proud. It makes me feel like we've done something right, not just, you know, having great teams and winning, but recruiting the right type of player who's going to go on and represent that when they're on, you know, away from campus, when they're out on their own playing for themselves, that they still have that tie back to UCLA. And I'm really proud of that. And, and I love it. I love to see it. And they all did it this summer. Everybody was wearing UCLA. And... I think, you know, maybe as a tribute back to the fact that we won the championship this year on some level, but hey, we'll take it. It was great. Those players that have had a taste of USGA play, they've been on TV, they've been kind of individuals away from the group, they got to come back now and re-gel as a team. Mm -hmm. What kind of challenge does that pose for you as a coach? You know, I, I don't think it's going to be hard for us at all this year. Um, in fact, we, uh, Alicia and I, my assistant and I, were out on the road at a lot of the USGA events watching and uh, spectating and you know, out there supporting the girls, and you know, we'd we'd ha we'd see them. We they were hanging out together. They were getting together for dinner. Um, you know, it's they've been together all. Even though they've been playing individual golf, they've been together all summer. And at the end of the day, in our sport, I mean, we are still an individual sport, and it, and the quality of the team is going to be about the quality of the individuals and how they play um, on their own ball. And so, you know, to come together as a group, we're going to be competitive for the lineup. But they're, they're very supportive of each other, and it showed all through the summer. You mentioned earlier that it is very difficult to repeat as national champions. Do you see any obstacles right now that are, that are hindering your team from winning another national championship? There, I mean, there's a lot of great teams out there. There's other teams that could win. It's, so much of it is, and you know this from gymnastics too, it's, it's scoring when you need to score. And a lot of factors can contribute to that. Um, you know, the golf course, how it's set up. I mean, some courses set up better for certain teams than they do for other teams. It's just a fact. Um, how, you know, the weather plays out. Some of it has to do with the tee times. I mean, I've been in tournaments and the championship, in fact, this year, where um, the way that our pairings were set up, we received the brunt of the wind that came up. So teams that played in the morning the first day played in benign conditions. Teams that played in the afternoon played in horrendous conditions, and that happens. So you've got to be able to play through that, but there's a lot, there's a lot that goes on in golf. I think the main thing is just getting your team there, getting them prepared, ready to handle whatever comes their way, and getting them you know, to a place where they're all playing at their best at that time, and then you go to the course and, and hope it all comes together. So um, we can win, but you know, there's, I just, you can't get no guarantees in golf, but you can, you know, you know how, we know how good we are. So. 
Coach, community support very important to funding all of college athletics. Tell mm -hmm. us about the Bruin 18 fundraiser that's going to be going on later this month. Yeah, we have it. It's coming up on September 19th at Palos Verdes Golf Club, which is right down the road. Beautiful course, on a beautiful setting up in the hills. And uh, we've got almost, we've got spots still left for about 12 players, but it, we're getting pretty close to a full field. Um, this is our, our once a year tournament that we host in order to raise money for our golf program. Um, to help keep us at the level that we, you know, we want to be. And our, the great thing about this event is our girls actually get to come out and they play with um, the amateurs who, or the, the other players who sign up. And so it's really a special time, I think, for people in the community who love golf, who love UCLA, to get together and actually get to meet a player and play golf with a player. I mean, you don't get to do that in a whole lot of sports. You know, you're not going to go swim next to a, you know, <laughs> with a swimmer very often. So it's really a great opportunity for people who, who love golf and, and just want to be a little bit closer to the team and get to know some of the players. And tell us how people will should contact the Bruins to, to get involved in that. Well, we have our website, which is uh, www.bruin18, as, as in 18, invitational.com. Um, and that's the best place to go online, or, or you know, you can call our offices here on campus, um, and we've got those, you know, numbers if anybody needs those. But the website is the best place. You can go online there. Everything's, you can register right there. What's the importance of this golf tournament to your own players besides getting to meet the sponsors? Do they use it as practice? How does it help them prepare for the upcoming season? Well. It's, they're going to be playing, which is great, but most importantly um, for them, it's an opportunity to learn one of the most important elements of professional women's professional golf is sponsorships. And um, every tournament has a pro-am of some sort. And so this is sort of a practice for that. I mean, because if they move on to careers in professional golf, they're going to be required to participate in pro-ams for every event. And that means you're playing with a group of people you've never met, you're, you're meeting sponsors, you're socializing, you're, you know, that whole element. So it, it's, it's just good practice for them to get out there, to have to kind of come out of their shell and, and get to know people and talk to them and, and try to educate them a little bit about UCLA or what the program means. And um, I just, I, I think it's a wonderful chance for them to have a great day and, and just get to know people who later on could potentially help their careers. The website does a great job of covering all of UCLA sports. Tell us how the people can come out and actually watch your team play. Well, we have, um, if you, you know, you can go on the website. Our schedule is up there. But we have a couple of local tournaments that we're going to be playing in this year. Um, the first one is actually at Palos Verdes, and it's in uh, February. It's called the Northrop Grumman Re Regional Challenge. Very strong field, um, great tournament. And then our home event, which is going to be uh, March uh, 1, 2, and, excuse me, March, we move the dates now, three, four, five, and it's at El Cab, El Caballero Country Club, which is right here in Tarzana. Those are events where anybody in the community, I mean, if you wanted to come out and watch some college golf and see literally some of the best players in college ever, that's the place to go. So we've got, just look online um, on our website and all the dates are up there. But the spectators are always welcome, and it's free. That's the best part. Chance to get a glimpse at the future of the LPGA Tour. That's for sure. Coach, thanks for joining us. I have one more question for you. I've been kind of pull-hooking every... Well, we better save that for another show. <laughs> that's that's going to do it for UCLA Bruin Talk. We'll work on my golf game later. But until then, thanks for joining us. Allison and I will be back next week with another great show. Congratulations again, Coach. Thanks for joining us. Thanks, Allison.